Welcome to the Copper King Mine in Murrow. Today we're going to talk about the Midvale Smelter. The Midvale Smelter processed some of the first ores coming out of the Bing Canyon mines. So, stay tuned. The Midvale Smelter. Today we're going to talk about the Midvale Smelters. These smelters process some of the first ores coming out of Bingham Canyon's mines. Main Street runs north and south through the town. Once this was the old Indian Trail running down into a swamp. Here's an early picture looking down Main Street around 1900. This smelter picture shows an old Indian Pioneer Cemetery. Now here's a close-up of that. The smelter had to run the rails around it and there was no dumping in this area. One of the old grave markers is still there. You can see a picture of that. And a couple that I took. Here's a map of Midvale, and you can see the Midvale smelter there to the left, the little town and the swamp to the north. In 1871, Utah Central Railroad will extend its line to Sandy coming through Midvale, back then Bingham Junction. Then the Wasatch and Jordan Valley Railroad went east to the Granite Quarry and then eventually up to Alta and its mines. Now west went the Bingham and Camp Floyd Railroad to Bingham's mines. Remember, railroad tracks once ran down the middle of Center Street. Center Street runs east and west. These tracks were not removed until April 15, 1961. Here's an article on that removal. And here's a 1951 photo of Midvale's library. And you can see those tracks there right in the front. These railroads made Midvale, or should I say Bingham Junction, a great crossroads to build smelters. Here's some early pictures of Bingham Junction and that railroad. The first uh, depot there was in Midvale. Here's unloading ore bin, what was up in the smelter. Here's a picture of the locomotive. It was from the Wasatch Line. It was owned by Little Contwood Transportation Company. This is a 1920 picture. Here's a whistle stop for President Taft in 1909. Some of those mines serviced by the early Midvale smelter were Old Jordan, that was one of the first claims up in Bingham, Galena, Neptune, Kemptum, Northern Chief, Bonanza, Commercial, Stewart, and many others. Here's some pictures of the old Jordan and the Galena mine. And then the old Jordan mines in 1909. The map shows Bingham Consolidated Mines. And then here's a couple of pictures of the commercial mines. And that was taken in 1902. Midvale smelter history will last for 100 years with five different smelters in the area, 1871 to 1971. Now Midvale had three names. The first name was East Jordan, then Bingham Junction. In 1909, the town will incorporate a contest for the best name with some 200 entries. Midvale was the winner, submitted by Walter Smith. He was a clerk at the smelter. The Sheridan Hill smelter was one of the first. It came in 1871. Now it was south of where the big U.S. smelter will later be. Now this property will change hands and renamed the Galena Smelter. By 1900, it will be known as the Old Jordan Smelting Works. The earliest pictures I have of the smelters are these two. Note again that Old Indian and Pioneer Cemetery. In 1899, Bingham Copper and Gold Mining Company will start construction on a new copper smelter and that will be north of town. Here's some pictures of that. Bingham Copper and Gold Mining Company will reorganize and become Bingham Consolidated Mining and Smelting Company, and that would be in 1901. This smelter will also be referred as the Commercial Smelter because it serviced that old commercial mine up in Bingham. We also have some neat pictures of inside that smelter, and these were taken around 1901. The Stanford for Insurance map dated 1911 shows that smelter complex. In 1902, United States Mining Company will build a large new smelter. Now this went from the old Galena property to the Bingham Consolidated Land on the north. By May 1902, Midville will be operating the second and third 
largest copper smelters in the state, with Murray's Utah Consolidated, that's Highland Boy Smelter, being number one. The U.S. smelter will add a lead smelter section June 1905. The sulfate copper and lead ores put sulfur oxens and arsenic fumes in the air, damaging the surrounding crops. The farmers had enough. Meeting with the smelter owners failed. By 1906, the farmers took the smelters to court and won. We have a video on that smoke farming lawsuits. Check it out. It's pretty good. The suit will eventually shut down all copper smelting in both Murray and Midvale. United States Mining Company lead smelter will remain open. Their ores will had lower sulfur content. So after improving the process, <laughs> by March 1907, these modifications were so extensive, the company will have to reorganize to fund the changes, becoming United States Smelting Company. They will remain open for some 50 years, closing July 1st, 1958. Bingham Consolidated Mining and Smelting Company will close for good December 24th, 1907. As with Murray's Utah Consolidated, that's a Highland Boy smelter, they will build a new smelter in Tooele, the International Smelter. The Bingham Consolidated Mining and Smelting Company smelter site will be home to a steel mill. Here's a couple of old pictures of the old Western steel mill then an inside picture of that steel mill. Then it will become a glass factory, then a U.S. rock wool company in the 1940s, and then Welch Brothers Mill. Here's a map of that Welch and Son planing mill. And now it's a builder's first choice, I think. It's been a couple other things also. As Midvale Smelters continued operating, technologies changed, producing not only lead, but arsenic, zinc, copper, silver, and cadmium. They added a refinery in 1933. Arsenic was used as a herbicide. In World War II, arsenic trioxide was used to keep vegetation down on runway aircraft strips in the Pacific Islands. When the smelters were in full production, Midvale prospered. Here's a picture of Midvale over the years. Here's some 1930s. I think this one's 1934. And then some pictures of 1942 and 1949. Then we have some great pictures from the Tribune Negative Collection. And they were taken in the 1950s. Now this is a fun picture. This is City Hall being built in 1941. And then Christmas in 1957. Same City Hall. Midvale Motors, Burns Superfoods, J.C. Penney, Sprouse Ritz, ah, the wonderful Vincent Drug. Then we have a colored postcard of uh, Midvale. And here's a picture of the famous Harvest Day Parade that they had every year. Now, the shutdown in 1958 was hard on the people of Midvale especially the older individuals that worked for the smelter. The town will struggle for many years. My great-grandfather worked for the smelter. This is a 1929 picture of him. And now he's on the front row, second from the right. Now these were 25-year men or more, so pretty much from the 1902 beginning of that smelter. My grandfather also worked for the smelter. Now, he was 49 years old when the smelter shut down in 1958. To finish out his retirement, he went to work underground at the United States Mining Company's Lark Mine. Here's a picture of my grandfather. He was part of the rescue unit at Lark Mine. Here's some interior pictures of the smelter. Now, most of these were taken June 1948. Showing these pictures of work inside the Midvale smelter, Makes me wonder what my great-grandfather and my grandfather jobs were at the smelter. What a hard life this must have been to work at the Midvale Smelter. I lived in Midvale until I was 10 years old. I remember playing around the old Bingham Consolidated Smelter slag dump. I wondered why there was two slag dumps, the old one and the new one. 
Well, behind the old slag dump, there was this pond with tadpoles and frogs and cattails, a fun place for a kid. When they blew the three smokestacks down, they had two metal ones and one brick one, I lived right next to the smelter site on Smelter Street. Here's our pictures of those smokestacks. The apartment where we lived was once a dance hall. It was called the Imperial Dance Hall. Said it had a spring floor. In 1912, tickets to the dance were 50 cents. They will convert it into an eight-unit apartment called the Grayson, later the Caroline Apartments. Well, the smokestacks came down with a bang on July 4th, 1960. Afterward, my dad and I snuck into the site and walked down on the flattened metal stacks that had blown down. Probably not a very smart thing to do. Now, here's an interesting picture of one of those metal smokestacks, and it's being put in. Anyway, the brick smokestack didn't come down all the way and had to be blown up again. Now, I have a picture of that piece of that brick smokestack that remained in the background of my 10th birthday party. That large brick smokestack was built in 1921 and was 450 feet high. Just south of the smelter was the United States Mining Concentrator Mill. We have some pictures of that first gravity mill that was there and then a Stanboard Foreign Shirts map also shows that mill in 1911. Then some photos of that mill over time. It was also called the U.S. Flotation Mill, and eventually Sharon Steele would take that over. They would use froth flotation to separate minerals like lead and zinc. In 1967, concentrates from that Midvale's U.S. mill will be shipped to the International Smelter in Tooele. Well, November 1971, United States Smelting, Refining, and Mining Company will close Lark Mine and then Midvale's Mill and Concentrator. All that remains of Midvale Smelter is an old administration building. Now, it's called the Black Goose Home Interiors. If you walk inside, you can still see the vault, what they used to make payroll with. We'll end by showing 1911 Stanford Fire Insurance maps of that old Midville Smelters complex. So that was the smelter at Midville.